जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जनवल्लभ गिरीवर धारी गोपी जनवल्लभ गिरीवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जनरंजन या मुनतीर वनचारी यमुनतीर वनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरीवर धारी गोपी जन वल्लभ गिरीवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जनरंजन यशोदानंदन ब्रज जनरंजन मुनतीर वनचारी या मुनतीर वनचारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी थैंक यू जय ओम विष्णु पाद परम हम सब प्रवृकचार्य अश्वतर श्री श्रीमद ऐसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की जाए जय ओम विष्णु पाद परम हम सब प्रवृकचार्य अश्वतर श्री श्रीमद भक्ति सिद्धांत सरस्वती गोस्वामी महाराज प्रभुपाद की जाए अनंत खोथि वैष्णव वृंद की जाए नामचार्य शिल हरिदास ठाकुर की जाए इस खान फाउंडर चार्य शिल प्रभुपाद की जाए प्रेम से कहो श्री कृष्ण चैतान्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर शिव सारि गौर भक्त वृंद की जाय श्री श्री राधा कृष्ण गोप गोपनाथ श्याम खुन हर खुन गिर गौरदान की जाय श्री वृंदावन धाम की जाय श्री मायपुर धाम की जाय जगन्नाथपुरी धाम की जाय गंग माई की जाय यमुन माई की जाय तुलसी देवी की जाय भक्ति देवी की जाय श्री हरि नाम संकीर्तन की जाय ग्रंथराज श्रीमद भागवतम की जाय समवेर भक्त वृंद की जाय Gaur Premanande, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shri Guru and Shri Gauranga. All glories to Prabhupada. Naray Namaskritya. Naram Chayva Narottamam. Devim Saraswatim Vyasam. Tato Jayam Ordeyat. नस्त प्रायुत भद्रेशु 
नित्यम भागवत सेवया भागवत उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर भवति नष्ट की ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय हरे कृष्ण सो टुडे वी वी आर गेटिंग अ चांस टू हियर फ्रॉम श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो 6 फर्स्ट चैप्टर टेक्स्ट 23 एवं निवासतस तस्य लालयनस्य तत्सुतान कालो त्यागान महान राजन अष्टयुषा समा एवं निवसतस्तलयन से तत्सुता कालो त्यागन महान राजन अष्टयसु सम लालयान से तत्सुता कालो त्यागन महान राजन अस्तुसुतायुसमस्तलयन से तत्सुता कालो त्यागन महान राजन कालो त्यागन महान राजन त्यागन महान राजन सुतान कालो त्यागन महान राजन Anyone else would like to chant? एवं निवसत एवं इन दिस वे निवसत living tasya of him a jamil 
Lalayanasya, maintaining, tat, of her, the Shudrani, Sutan, sons, Kalaha, time, Atyagat, passed away, Mahan, a great amount, Rajan, O King, Ashtashatya, 88, Ayusaha, of the duration of life, Samaha, years, translation by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. My dear King, while he has, while he's thus spent his time in abominable sinful activities to maintain his family of many sons, 88 years old, 88 years of his life passed by. We'll go to the next text. Tasya pravasya putra dasha tasham tuyovama balo narayano namna pitroscha deito brishyam. That old man Ajamil had ten sons, of whom the youngest was a baby named Narayan. Since Narayan was the youngest of all the sons, he was naturally very dear to both his father and his mother, Purport. The word Pravayasaha indicated indicates Jamil's sinfulness because although he was 88 years old, he had a very young child. According to the Vedic culture, one should leave home as soon as he has reached 50 years of age. One should not live at home and go on producing children. Sex life is allowed for 25 years between the ages of 25 and 45 or at the most 50. After that, one should give up the habit of sex life and leave home as a vanaprastha, and then properly take sannyas. A jamil, however, because of his association with the prostitute, lost all Brahminical culture and became most sinful, even in his so-called household life. Auma jnana timarandasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri guru ve namaha shri chaitanya mano bishtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kadam mayam dadati swapadantikam vandeham shri guru shri yuta parakamalam shri guru and vaisnavamscha shri rupam sagrajatam sahagana ragunatam vitam tam sajivam sadvetam savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamsha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namastiti Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vrinda Vineshwari Vishabhanu Sita Devi Pranamami Hare Pray Vancha kalpa tribhis cha kripa sundhibhi eva cha patitanam pavinibhyo vaishnabhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasari Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna So Ajamil Prabhu He's showing us how not to live as a householder. And Srila Prabhupada, he would stress this idea of one-fourth being a brahmachari, student life. The second half, as a, if, if he would prefer to get married. And then the three-fourth, uh, Vanuprastha, and then the last years of his life, takes sannyas. It's actually a nice, it's a wonderful... Uh, arrangement actually because 25 years of enjoyment you know sex life that should be plenty of time and so so he's showing us the way how and how not to live as a householder so Srila Prabhupada he says that you must always remain dressed like a Vaishnav that is necessity prikshanya it means attractive to look at or otherwise how will they be impressed so I recently went to the USCIS, which is the United States Citizenship and Immigration Services. 
And I was in the back in the Pujari room, and Dharma Setu Prabhu, he said, now you're an American, you know. <laughs> and then he said, now, you know, you're going to start thinking I'm this, I'm that. So to most people, the citizenship or belonging to a certain country increases the illusion of maya or ahama meiti. I am this body, and in relation to this body is mine. And it says that worrying gives a small thing a big shadow. So I was studying and studying for this test. There were a hundred questions on the website to study for. And the interviewer, they asked 10 questions. If you get six correct, then you pass. If you don't, you have to retake it. And so Dr. Tyler Prabhu, he was very kind to help me study for this test. And by Krishna's arrangement, it went by so nicely. And I was thinking of what Srila Prabhupada says, you know, I have to dress like a Vaishnava. So I was deciding whether I should go in my dhoti and kurta or just, you know, <laughs> as a civilian. So I said, you know, I'm just going to go for it. So I went in my, I went like this. And uh, the first thing the person asked me was, you know, this is a federal building. Do you have any weapons with you? <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, no, I don't. And then when they were giving you know, uh, the, what is it called? The people to go pass through the x-ray machine. I told them, I have this little scissor. You, know, you might think it's a knife, so I, I handed it to them. So they measured the length of the blade, and they concluded that it wasn't a weapon. So they allowed me to go upstairs. And I was studying before my name was called. And the lady that interviewed me, she was so kind. You know, she said, because I... I like to sit cross-legged like this. So I was sitting on the chair uh, cross-legged. And then she said, wow, you're very, you're very, you look very comfortable. You know, your feet is up. Like that. So, I, so I went in the room with her. And then she started asking me questions. And she made me feel very comfortable. And the questions that she asked were so easy. They were the questions that Dr. Tyler, he asked me. So it was not really about learning, but it was memorization. And so I got six answers correct, and she stopped right away. And then there's a writing and a reading portion, and the, the sentence that she had me read was very easy. It was like the senator controls the vote, <laughs> something like that. It was, it was very simple to read. And then writing also. She said uh, the people of the states can vote, something like that. It was very, uh, very easy. And then... She mentioned my tilak. She said, what's that on your forehead? And I said, it's called tilak. And I told her that it's a sacred marking from the clay in India. And so she was very inquisitive about, you know, my lifestyle. And then she said something. She said, when I saw your folder, I didn't know what to expect. And I said, what do you mean? She said, the other people that I interviewed, they have a big folder <laughs> like this. You know, criminal records or background checks like that. And then she said, when I saw yours, you just had your fingerprint and your picture when you were four years old. So I didn't know how old you were going to be. So I, so I told her, yeah, <laughs> you know, uh, we live very simple lives. And then so at the end, she said something. I mean, I don't you know, like to uh, talk nicely about myself, but she said, you're the most unique person I've ever met. Wow, wow. And so, um, yeah. and then after that, she gave me my paperwork. She said, you can go upstairs and you can take your oath. So when I was upstairs, there were four other people with me. And after we took our uh, pledge, there was a man from an Asian country. And the first thing he did was he told this other person, take a picture of me next to this American flag. <laughs> So he was, he was proud, you know, to be a, a U.S. citizen. And so when we go out, we should try to remember that when, the devo when they see devotees, it purifies them. And Maharaj and I, when we were returning from, I think, Hawaii, we were, we were uh, dressed like this. We were waiting for our, uh, what was it called? our uh, terminal to be open, or our uh, 
what is it called? Gate to be open. And then there was this stranger, total stranger, he came up to us. He said, are you Hare Krishnas? And then we said, yes. And he said, man, I remember you guys. I used to go to the temple in Los Angeles. And what he asked was, do you have a book? Do you have literature? And I was reading this little Bhagavad Gita. So I said, I have this. And without even asking, he gave a donation. So it was nice. And so if we are not out dressed like devotees, how will they recognize us? And then uh, when we were waiting for money, there was a van that pulled up. You know, we were waiting for him. And there's this young lady, she said, I like the orange. You know, she was yelling across uh, the, what was it called, the waiting line. And so there's numerous occasions where I was just wearing a dhoti or even a tilak, but it gives us an opportunity to preach Krishna consciousness. And Balaram Prabhu, he gave this example. He was, he was dressed, you know, like a devotee, and he was at a supermarket or some department store. And someone asked him, do you work here? <laughs> you know, so... They know that we're different. They know that, you know, they have a lot of questions. And so when we go on book distribution, there's many people that may take books and there's many that may not take books. But Srila Prabhupada says that these books are like gold. Those who know the value will buy it. So those that know the, you know, value of Srila Prabhupada's books, they'll, they'll take it. And Krishna gives an estimation of those who know the value. Manushyanam sahishrishu kaschit yatati siddhyai yatatam api siddhanam kaschin mam viti tatvataha. Out of many thousands among men, one may endeavor for perfection. And of those who have achieved perfection, hardly one knows me in truth. So if you can distribute a book to someone, that's a big thing. And there was this, uh, there was this lady at Bobo Park. Her shirt said, "No, no bad days." So I gave me inspiration or an idea. So whenever someone comes comes to my table, I ask them, "You ever had a bad day?" <laughs> and they would laugh, and I would say, the "Next thing, have you heard of stress?" So these two, they would automatically be drawn to the books. And a lot of times, I've had success with that. And just like in uh, Jamil's pastime in India, they would name their children names after uh, Krishna or Srimati Radharani. Some people would name their children Govinda, Krishna, Rama, um, Narayan. And so my cousin, the one that introduced me to Krishna consciousness, her name is uh, Madhurya Devi, Madhurya Leela Devi Dasi, and she named her child Jagannath. Which is very sweet. And so the reason why is because it gives them the chance to chant Krishna's holy name and to remember Krishna. So similarly, uh, Jamil, although he was basically uh, fallen at, towards the end of his life, he's named his son Narayan. And how many Yamadutas came to get a Jamil? Three. Because he said you could commit uh, sins by mind, words, and uh, body. A and there were four uh, Vishnu Dutas. Do you know why? Because there's four syllables in Narayana. So, so four uh, Vishnu Dutas and Yama Dutas came. And during the time of initiation, we are given spiritual names or names that remind us of Krishna and his pastimes. So they help us to remember Krishna. And because at the time of death, that's the test. Yam yam vapi smaram bhavam tyajit yanti kalivaram tam tam ivaiti konteya sadatad bhava bhavataha. That whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, O son of Kunti, that state he will attain without fail. So this is a test for the devotees. When death comes, will we remember Krishna? Or will we remember something else? And I remember when we jumped off of uh, Sunset Cliffs, midway, I remember I didn't know how to swim. <laughs> so when I was struggling, you know, I was thinking, all right, think of Krishna, but it's very difficult. So I, I can only imagine one that has forgotten Krishna, how old he remember Krishna. <laughs> so 
Srila Prabhupada says there are two classes of family men. There's the Griya Medi and the Grihastas. And so what is the difference? A Griya Medi, Medi means a materialistic householder. He doesn't know anything but to maintain his family and he tries to provide some type of sense gratification. He basically forgot his duty as a servant of Krishna. Whereas a grahasta is within the Varnashram system and a grahasta is someone who knows the goal of life, Krishna consciousness. So he knows his spiritual responsibilities. Uh, a Grahamedi, he thinks that everything is permanent. He thinks I'm going to be able to keep my wife, my kids. Even after this life, I'm with them. But just like, you know, we didn't know what type of family we're born into. So the next life, we don't know what type of uh, situation we'll be in. And so, Srila Prabhupada, he says that economic development begins out of family affection. He wants to work just so he can provide for his wife, kids, he can buy things for his children. And to earn his livelihood, he is attached to family. I meet a lot of uh, parents on book distribution. And I ask them, what's your happiness? And they say, my family. <laughs> so I said, you know, can you think of something else? And they said, my job, you know. So just, you know, work, family, my bank account. Th these are what a great matey thinks the goal of life is. And so material bondage is that family affection. Yes, it is your duty, but we shouldn't forget our real business. And people would argue, right, taking care of my family is my dharma. But Krishna says, what is the ultimate dharma? Sarva dharma paritya ja mam ekam sharanam vraja aham tvam sarva papebhyo moksha yishyami maschaha to abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender to Krishna. I shall deliver you from all sinful reactions. Do not fear. And Srila Prabhupada, or the Bhagavatam, he describes that a materialistic householder is like a silkworm. It creates a cocoon for itself and it becomes trapped inside. And he can't, there's no means of getting out. And in the fifth canto, it's described that the attraction between man and female is a basic principle of material existence. On the basis of this misconception, which ties together the hearts of the male and female, one becomes attracted to his body, home, property, children, relatives, and wealth. In this way, one increases life's illusions and thinks in terms of my, I, and mine. So, Srila Prabhupada in the purport, he says that, Family attraction is so strong that even if a person is neglected by his family in old age, he cannot give up family affection and he remains at home just like a dog. So this is a pathetic, uh, you can say, condition of an attached materialistic householder. Even Vidura, he had to preach heavily to Dhritarashtra Maharaj. He told him, you know, your lungs are full of bile and, you know, your memory shortened, so why not just renounce and go to the forest and leave without n anyone knowing, you know, I like that. Because a lot of people, when they leave their body, they want to have a big ceremony for them, right? They want to be dressed nicely, they want to be recognized for their achievements. That's good, but how have you helped your family spiritually? And it says that one should not be a father, a mother, a spiritual teacher, a demigod, if he cannot deliver his dependence from the cycle of birth and death. When I read that, I said, no more family for me. <laughs> because, you know, I'm a fool. And so, Chanaka Pandit, he says what real education is. And he doesn't say PhD, MA. He says a pundit or a learned person. There's three main instructions. Besides one's own wife, we should see every woman as a mother. And when you see others' property on the street, you treat it like garbage, you don't touch it. And when you see others suffering, you feel their pain. And Sri Prabhupada, he comments that garbage, nobody goes. But in Hong Kong, he saw one woman, she was digging for treasure in the trash. 
And he says, this is Kali Yuga, something abom- abominable or untouchable, but still people are trying to get something from the garbage. And you see this in Balboa Park, you know, those that are unfortunate, homeless, they're looking for, you know, drinks or some type of food in the park. Even if it's been, even if it's old, they still take it because it's survival. And Srila Prabhupada, he says that sex life is not forbidden in this movement, but hypocrisy is forbidden. And an example of, of it is in uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he was very strict, right? And the pastime goes that Chato, uh, Chato Haridas or Junior okay. Ch- Chata, Chota Haridas or Junior Haridas, he was asked by Bhagavan Acharya to go beg f- for some white rice from uh, Shiki Mahiti's sister. And her name was Madhavi Devi. She was, she was an elderly woman. And so Chota Haridas, he was a singer. He was a personal associate of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so when he went to uh, beg some rice, he, he gave it to uh, Bhagavan Acharya. And then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he went to honor the prasadam and he was glorifying how nice the white rice is. And he asked, where did you get this? And then who, who got this? And so when he mentioned Chota Haridas, he said, he said, uh, ask him not to see me anymore. So Mahaprabhu was very strict because uh, Chota Haridas, he was presenting himself as a brahmachari, but sannyasi, sorry. Srila Prabhupada says brahmachari. So as a sannyasi, but so, uh, so uh, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is showing us if you're willing to take this path of, uh, you know, brahmachari sannyas, you should be very strict. We don't allow hypocrisy, or it will deteriorate the movement. And Srila Prabhupada he says, if you think you want sex, family, children, you marry and remain a gentleman. You don't go out chasing. You don't, you know, do all of that nonsense. And. I was distributing books in uh, Balboa Park, and I met this Christian man. You know, sometimes you become friends with them. You know, how are you doing? So you get to know them. So this man, he he was a Christian uh, man. His name was James. And the first thing that came out of his mind was, I grew up loving sex. And I said, why would you mention that? So he was telling me how uh, he's having trouble with the mind, the senses, lust. And so, uh, maybe 50 or 60, he, he's already over. And so, he said that he's having, he always had a hard time with lust because grew, you know, growing up in the West, even before graduating high school, you're already breaking the four regulated principles, right? And if you're not breaking them, the whole school thinks you're a loser, right? And so... This is the Kali Yuga. Instead of, you can say, glorifying or uh, seeing that as, a, as something very valuable, they, they lose their you know, virginity at uh, what is called prom night. I, they have that celebration. Or, uh, <laughs> so uh, to become a brahmachari is very serious. And of course, we can preach to Matajis, but nothing intimate or personal, anything like that. And I spoke to a lady yesterday. I, I showed her the books, and she said, I remember you from last year, but you were white. And I said, really? We meet a lot of people. You know, They may remember us, but we may not remember them. So I said, what did we speak about? And they said, we, we spoke about reincarnation. He said, I got the book coming back. And I said, how did you like it? And he said, our conversation was very memorable. And so he said he liked the books, and he actually got another set and a Bhagavad Gita. He said, I would like to uh, give these to my friend. So people remember us uh, when we present the books nicely and when we're dressed as devotees. Sometimes I just I wear shorts when I go out because it was hot, but they don't see the legs. They just see the upper part. 
So I used my uh, my chowder, you know, to uh, stay warm. And so someone asked me, you know, I've always wondered what it's like to become a monk. So there's people out there. So I tell them that it's a life of austerity. We wake up very early. You know, we, we have our do's and don'ts. And then so he said, you know, maybe one day I'll, I'll become a monk. And I said, you can do it. So I told him, but these books, they help you to live a simple life, how to be uh, steady in mind, both in success and in failure. Because you understand that whatever is happening is due to your karma. So they like that, they take a book. And Srila Prabhupada, he narrates that there was a European gentleman, he went to Calcutta. He went to so many temples, you know, the goddess Kali, different temples. When he went to one of our temples, he saw Radha Krishna. And then he said, here is God. Because he saw that all the other temples, the demigods, they are working. But here Krishna is enjoying. Right? He has a flute. And so Srila Prabhupada says that Krishna has no duty. He doesn't have to go to the office, drive 50 miles away, going 70 miles, and he may get to some accident. No, Krishna's enjoying. And so since we're part and parcel of Krishna, that enjoyment or that tendency to want to enjoy, not work, is all in us. There's a lot of people out there that you know don't want to work, they don't want to be responsible, because that nature is from Krishna. But we are meant to serve so Krishna can enjoy. And when we dovetail to Krishna's desires, we automatically become happy. An example is watering the root of a tree. Everything else is nourished. And you also meet people that say they don't believe in God. Atheists. And Srila Prabhupada, he says, anyone that denies the existence of God, he's a madman. And someone said, Srila Prabhupada, wouldn't the right word be blind or stupid? And Srila Prabhupada, he says, mad is the sum total of stupidity. Right. So, <laughs> in, at the park, there's a, there's a little camp or a, a tent, and they're your neighborhood, your friendly neighborhood atheists. And when I just look at them, I just, I feel sorry for them. And those that don't believe in Krishna, uh, Srila Prabhupada says that he meets them as death. And a lot of people, they don't, you know, they may not, they may think that they don't care about, you know, hell or, or punishment, but um, Kapila Dev, he describes some of these uh, descriptions to his mother, Devahuti. He says, at death, he sees the messengers of the Lord of death come before him, their eyes full of wrath, and in great fear, he passes stool and urine. Arrested by the Yamadutas, who bind him by the neck with strong rope and cover his subtle body so that he may undergo severe punishment. While carried by the constables of Yamaraj, he is overwhelmed and trembles in their hands and trembles in their hands. While passing on the road, he is been by dogs, and he can remember the sinful activities of his life. He is thus terribly distressed. Upon, under the scorching sun, the criminal has to pass through rows of hot sand with forest fires on both sides. He is whipped on the back by the constables because of his inability to walk, and he is afflicted by hunger and thirst. But unfortunately, there is no drinking water, no shelter, and no place for rest on the road. While passing on the road to the abode of Yamaraj, he falls down in fatigue, and sometimes he becomes unconscious, but he is forced to rise again. In this way, he is very quickly brought to the presence of Yamaraj. Thus he has passed 99,000 yojanas within two or three moments, and then he is at once engaged in the torturous punishment which, is, which he is destined to suffer. He is placed in the midst of burning pieces of wood, and his limbs are set on fire. In some cases, he is made to eat his own flesh, or to have it eaten by others. So there's a lot more description, but I'm not going to read, because it's uh, gruesome. So, we should always remember that there is life after next. And Srila Prabhupada says that karma and reincarnation are like fire. Whether you believe karma or not, or reincarnation is still going to act. 
a child may touch the flame of the fire, but the fire will not excuse him, even though he's innocent. So similarly, so many people, they, they think just because I don't believe in hell or next life, you know, they can be excused by it. And I would like to narrate uh, a story. There was a king named Dirga Bahu. Do you guys know this story? It's from the Sri Garga Samhita. So he was a king. He was very cruel and sinful. And he was addicted to visiting prostitutes. While on earth, this cruel sinner, he murdered 100 brahmanas and 10 pregnant uh, women. And one day he was hunting in the forest, and with the flood of arrows, he accidentally killed a brown cow. And so one day, his minister, greedy to get his kingdom, he killed the king in the forest with a sharp sword. And so seeing him fall into the ground and dead, the Yamadutas came, bound him, and took him to the city of Yamaraj. Seeing this sinner brought before him, the powerful Yamaraj, he asked his uh, scribe, Chitra, Chitra Gupta, what is the proper punishment for him? So Chitra Gupta said, O oh, great king, he should be thrown into 8,400,000 8, hells for as long as the sun and the moon shine in the sky. On the earth, he did not perform a single pious deed. He killed 10 pregnant women. He killed a brown cow. He killed thousands of deer in the forest. He offended the demigods and the brahmanas. He is a great sinner. So then, Narada Muni, he narrates that the Yamadutas, they took this sinner and threw him in a terrible 8,000 mile wide cauldron of bubbling oil in the hell of Kunbi Paka. And the moment that sinner came in it, the boiling oil, which was as hot as the great fires of uh, devastation, it became cool. So then, it says, just like Prahlad was unhurt in the same situation, that sinner was not hurt by the boiling oil. So then the Yamadutas, they described this incident to uh, Yamaraj. And Yamaraj and Chitragupta, they carefully reviewed the sinner's case, and they concluded that while he was on earth, the sinner had not for a moment performed even a single pious deed. So then Vyasa, Dave, he appeared on the scene in the assembly, bowing down before him and carefully worshiping him. Yamaraj and Vyasa, Dave, uh, he asked the following questions to Vyasa, Dave. He said, O oh, great king, the intelligent sages who have studied all the scriptures know that the ways of piety, sin, and spiritual progress are very subtle and difficult to understand. Somehow or other, or by destiny, the sinner did not perform a pious deed, and by the deed he became purified. So please hear of this story. So Vyasadeva, he explained that in this forest, a person who wears uh, Gopi Chandan, or uh, the sinner died where someone, someone's hand, uh, Gopi Chandan from Dwarka had accidentally fallen. And so dying in Gopi Chandan, that sinner became purified. So a, a person who wears Gopi Chandan, Tilak, attains a spiritual form like that of Lord Narayan. Simply by seeing him, one becomes free of the sins of killing a Brahmana. And then Narada concluded, hearing this, Yamaraj, who understands the glories of Gopi Chandan, took the sinner, placed him on an airplane that goes anywhere one wishes, and sent him to Vaikuntha, which is above the worlds of matter. O king, thus I have described to you the glories of Gopi Chandan. So even just wearing tilak, right? That's amazing. So Srila Prabhupada, we, we owe him a lot. And, but he, he fell in... Yeah. Yeah, someone had dropped it from Dwarka. So he died, you know, like that. And uh, one more. So when Arjuna saw the universal form of Krishna, he was asking, who are you? He was afraid. And then so Krishna, he says, Kalosmi loka shaya krit pravidro lokan sama hartum iha pravartyaha. He says, Time I am, the great destroyer of the worlds, and I have come here to destroy all people. So after displaying this form to Arjuna, Arjuna became terrified. His mind was disturbed. And then he asked Krishna, please, you know, go back to your original form. 
And then Krishna uh, displayed his four-arm form and then his original two-arm form. And when Krishna saw that Krish, uh, when Arjuna saw Krishna's beautiful human-like, very beautiful two-arm form, his mind was pacified. And then Krishna, he said something very interesting. He said, Su, Sudur Darsham Idam Rupam. My dear Arjuna, this form of mine you are now seeing is very difficult to behold. Even the demigods are ever seeking the opportunity to see this form which is so dear. And why is this important? Because Krishna is on the altar. That same uh, two arm form of Krishna, the one that's very difficult to even see, is here, be here in this temple. So we should consider ourselves to be fortunate. And Srila Prabhupada, he says, be careful to keep the temple very clean. Every corner is Krishna. Don't think Krishna is only in the temple room. No, Krishna is everywhere. Every part of this temple is Krishna. And then Srila Prabhupada, he says, that is the test. One who cannot rise early in the morning, he is not spiritually serious. That is the test, Brahma Mohurta. This hour, one hour before sunrise, very auspicious moment. So those that are attached to family life, why not join Krishna's family? You know, that's eternal. That's our original family. Okay, I think I'm going to stop there. Is there any questions or comments, corrections? Uh, by Kuntil Prabhu? Thank you for a very nice class, very enlightening. <clears throat> I had a short comment and a question. Uh, the comment is just, you were explaining so nicely the value of wearing Vaishnav dress in public places and things, and just to up, up it a little bit more, um, when our son was in Gurunkul in Mayapur, two or three times he came back during those years, and the boys there, they get used to wearing the wooden shoes, the karams, you know? <laughs> so. He'd be coming through airports and stuff, and like, you know, the dirty, the chatter, the tilak, and the karams. And for some reason, shoes are such a deal. You know, people be like, <sighs> they just see those shoes, hear him clacking down the terminal <laughs> hallways, and they'd be like coming up to him in droves, like, wow, what, who are you? What's it all about? Like, the, so it's, it, they're kind of painful to get used to, but if you wear them for a month or two, and if you add the karams to the Vaishnav dress, it's like you'll, you'll be a crowd stopper, you know, <laughs> what we noticed with him. And my question was, um, you know, here we are in the Govardhan Dam, and this is a great opulence that so many men are n nicely dressed in saffron. We spent some years in Alachra where you'd be at a, a rarity, actually, you know. So I guess my question is, you know, hearing about the potential pitfalls of family life, why would a nice young man dressed in saffron enter into Grihasta Ashram? So I have the answer for that. So Srila Prabhupada, he says, there are four ashrams. He says, choose one that suits your nature, and then uh, be sincere about it. So we have to be serious. Do we still have some uh, desires to, you know, maybe start a family life, or maybe to have children to raise them Krishna consciousness? You know, family life is not bad, but like I mentioned, you have to be serious. I was watching a, a video and this devotee, he rises like at 3.30, he gets ready and everything and he and his wife, they, um, they live at home. Or, so they have a small altar and as Grahasta, Srila Prabhupada he says, I did you worship, that's kind of like the saving grace, you know. Because sometimes we're too much absorbed in working and you know other stuff that is preventing us from doing devotional service. But uh, deity worship, you can always see Krishna, you can always think of Krishna, and it's direct service. So Srila Prabhupada says we, we have to know our nature, you know. We don't we can't cheat Krishna, we can't cheat ourselves, we can't like that. So I so I I think that answered it. But um yeah, I asked a devotee one time if a, if a devotee knows the goal of life is to you know love Krishna to develop that relationship why would he leave the ashram? 
and he told me it's just uh, material desire. Yes, Marge? Yeah. I'd just like to add a little something to that. I have a question too, though. Um, not that the householders should wear a scarlet letter of shame on their chest. You know, if you look at it, the majority of humankind, obviously we're not advocating or pushing any of our young men in this direction, but if we're honest with ourselves and we look at history, 80% of the people get married. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada does call it an ashram. Mm -hmm. You know, he says, I, I was stressing it just on a tape, I was listening to it, he was saying, you know, Brahmachari ashram, Krihasta ashram. So, and Prabhupada's classic example is the elephant, you know, uh, Gajendra, who had to retreat a little bit when he was in the fight with the crocodile. Because an elephant is an, is an entity of the land and was weak in the water but stronger on the land. So, you know, it's a natural, it's one of the big four, you know, eating, sleeping, mating, and defending. And if one feels weakened in that way, or they think, oh, I'm lonely, I want to, there's all kinds of emotional reasons. It doesn't mean that they're a lesser human being. Mm -hmm. um, that's why saffron is a badge of courage. It, it, is, it, is a, it should be worn with great respect and dignity, and it should be deferred to. Saffron means something, you know, if they're serious about it. But if you figure that most people get married, good, nice devotees get married, it's not that they walk around, you know, with low self-esteem and I'm sinful. We used to think that Adhikari meant like it was wearing a kick me sign, you know, Bhajan Das Adhikari. Prabhupada said, no, Adhikari means one who has the qualifications to deliver Krishna. So just a little something on the householder's side so we don't Thank you, trip them, kick them when they go by and say, bad idiot, you know. And if you look at it, most temples are maintained. I mean, you look at Dharma Setu, you look at Dhyanidhi Prabhu, you look at Yamunapati Prabhu, and I, who, I don't know who I'm forgetting, you know. But they are pillars who have supported this temple decade after decade after decade. So, we don't want to deprecate the household or ashram. Mm -hmm. we, can, we, can, we can appreciate both. The austerity and dedication of the brahmacharis and the long-term service of the grihastas. Yes. Um, my question was, um, where did that story from the, uh, of the wicked king come from? It says uh, Sri Garga Samhita. Garga Samhita, okay, that's bona fide. Um, thank you. Uh, my question was, I heard in a class in Mayapur, and I did not have time to follow up as to the source, but he was saying in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, because um, it always, well, whatever, I'll just make it short that Siki Mihiti, the sister, you know, Siki Mihiti's sister, and Shota Haridas begging the rice, that there was a young woman there, and that's who he saw. Has yeah. any, he, so it wasn't necessary, of course one can look at an old woman, pro, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, I, I see the curved form of a tree, and I think of a woman. So that's how, you know, woman's mm -hmm. form is designed to distract the man, man's form is to strive, you know, distract the woman. So it works both ways. But the, so he wasn't looking at the old lady. Although that could have stimulated something. You don't sit alone with your, your mother, your, you know, your whatever it may be, I was, your daughter. I was, so what is that with the old? I was reading that section actually before I gave class and in the CC it didn't mention the about CC it. doesn't mention, I looked yeah. it up, it doesn't look it mentioned, so I'm looking for the source. But Srila Prabhupada, he did mention that he was lusting over a young woman, so I don't... He mentions it in purple. Yeah. 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 Commentary. Yeah. Commentary. So we read, so in the CC it's not mentioned a young woman, no. because no. I couldn't find it. So you're saying in a room conversation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I was just thinking one last thing. 
Yes. Then you got six out of a hundred questions. You became a U.S. citizen. It gives you. I mean, you're super smart. You surrendered to Lloyd and all that. But six out of a hundred give you an insight into the caliber of much of the U.S. citizen. <laughs> That's all it takes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you gotta have a warm pulse, right? A warm body and a pulse. I think also because <laughs> she was also saying, depending on the person, if they s speak too much, the you know the interview is gonna last longer. So I, I was just staying quiet until she asked me a question, so that you know speed up the process. Prophet is a fool that revealed men speaks. Mm. <laughs> yes, about the time. Thank you, Governor Prabhu. Very nice class. Uh, I had two questions. The first was, how many U.S. representatives there are? Nine. <laughs> it's Supreme Court justices. Yeah. How, how many what? U.S. House of Representatives. Come on, Tyler. Okay. <laughs> Good job. 400 something. 435. 435. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What's the other question? Um, from the purport, uh, Prabhupada does a really great job talking about, he says at 25 years of age, you can begin sex life and you can do it for 25 years, but he says best to retire at 45 or at most 50. Then the you should... Used to be 50 by so he's saying give it up by 45, you can do a soft landing and then... <laughs> he's saying at 50, you should give up the habit of sex life and leave home as a vanaprastha and then properly take sannyas. So he's doing a great job describing these three orders, right? So my question to you is, what is the ideal, because he's saying that this is according to Vedic culture. So what should we do from year 1 to 25? So originally they would go to Gurukul. You know, they would study under the Guru. They would go to a Gurukul. They would study for, uh, you know, they would study, you know, the Vedas, things like that. And they would develop good qualities. And they would also be educated, you know, in uh, household life. But yeah, Shiloh Prabhupada he says for one year to 25, you know, you should remain a, a student, celibate student. So that way you can always address women as Mataji, so it trains you up to be a good uh, grihastha. Mm -hmm. yes, I have a question about the uh, sannyasi ashram. Uh, there's four stages of sannyas, which the Paramahamsa, w which is the highest. Mm -hmm. And the question is if, if it's um, in this age, if it's uh, still relevant and practiced. And maybe if you could uh, shortly describe all the stages. Okay. I'm not so knowledgeable in that ashram, but maybe Maharaj or Dravida Prabhu would. The thing is. When you go to a doctor, there's a general disease, there's a general diagnosis, there's a general process of curing it. Then again, the doctor looks at the patient and calibrates both the medicine and the practice and the, you know, the whole thing according to the patient. So I remember Rabindra Sarup Prabhu saying it nicely, saying that, you know, Prabhupada lived with us. Prabhupada was there at 26 Second Avenue and so, you know, there's a guy asking what's a hippie? You know, the, the newspaper reporter, the t you know, Prabhupada says, oh, something <laughs> amazing, or, you know, because Prabhupada lived with us. He saw all the craziness. So, and that general, you know, he lived with Sally Agarwal, who passed away recently. So Prabhupada was living, you know, and Prabhupada kind of got his health stable. But if you read the Prabhupada's letters Prabhupada was writing to India, he was carefully studying the American psychology. He says, I see many churches, but a lot of them are, are locked up, so the people are naturally inclined to religion, but they're looking for a good answer because they're not getting good answers. They're not interested, you know. So Prabhupada was carefully studying the American society. So, in this, so Prabhupada knew us, that's my point. So Prabhupada has, yes, there's the Kuti Chak, there's the uh, Parabhajakacharya, there's Paramahansa, I've forgotten one. What's the one I forgot? Yeah, Bahudak. So there's four different stages. One is you live in a cottage and your family bring, it's like Prabhupada gives the example when you cut your fingernail. If you cut it too close, it's painful. You cut it at the right distance, you don't feel any pain. So renunciate. The Vedic culture is so 
deep and profound and uh, understanding of human nature and how to train it, how to direct it. So it, it's a whole process for becoming renounced. So, you know, one is that, you know, you, you live in a cottage, but your family brings things. Then your family stops bringing and, and, your, and your neighbors and the local people bring things. Then you stop depending on that and you start traveling. So there's all different stages. But Prabhupada has pared it all down just perfectly. So we just fought, Prabhupada's only given us one stage that you just take sannyas and how you follow it. Although there is a time towards the very end of your life, after Prabhupada says you preached all over the world and made disciples, made an impact on the world, then at the last, Prabhupada calls it the fag end of your, you know, which doesn't mean gay, it means the end of your life. You know, last few years, you focus on your personal spiritual life because you're going back to Godhead. So we just follow the way Prabhupada crafted things. There's all kinds of, you know, medicines for different disease, but the physician who knows you, has dealing with you personally, says you do this, you take this. Prabhupada said a, a wife needs one husband and a patient needs one doctor. So we take, you know, we just follow Prabhupada as far as, you know, all the different subtleties and different steps. And I've seen it so many times, I'll end here, but I've seen it so many times, devotees, you know, well in this Samhita it says this and that, and you chew and swallow this many times, and you have to pronounce, they chant the Hare Krishna mantra, it sounds like they're chewing their breakfast. You know, every, you can just, <laughs> but they're not, they're so busy thinking about the pronunciation, they're not thinking about the meaning of the words. So, there's an art to the thing and we keep it simple. Occam's razor, that which is the simplest and has the least steps is probably the process that will work. So we just follow Prabhupada. You want to add anything, go ahead. Okay. Tyler, you have one? Oh. I think we have uh, time for anyone on Zoom. Uh, no, 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 no contributions from Zoom today. I'm sorry. Vijay, what happened? <laughs> Are you feeling no, no, all right? No, He's stunned in ecstasy. He lost his voice. He can't. Yes, I'm alive. <laughs> okay. I'm shocked. Vijay. Thank you for your time and attention. Grantarashimad Bhagavatam Kijai. Shri Prabhupada Kijai.